Um, hello year 10, welcome to today's lesson on sequences. Please rule off where you got to your last lesson and put the title and the date, that'd be brilliant. And then have a go at this do now task. So write down these names for different types of sequences we looked at last lesson and then match them up with an example here. Brilliant, just pause the video please as you do this. Right, lovely, okay, so Fibonacci, you should have matched the red sequence because we know Fibonacci is the two previous terms added together to make the next one. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5. Then we're looking for arithmetic sequence, but you sometimes see it called a linear sequence. And we should know that's when you have um, a constant. So between each term, you're adding or subtracting the same value. So that must be the green one here because what's happening each time is we are adding 5. Um, similarly, it can also be a subtraction, as we said, you could have been subtracting 5 each time, and as long as the same constant of additional subtraction is happening, it's arithmetic. Brilliant. Then geometric progression, hopefully remember that is multiplying or dividing by a constant value. So we can see here that we're dividing by 5 each time, um, and that happens from term to term, so that makes it geometric progression. Brilliant. Then we're looking at square numbers, which we also talked about last lesson, means a quadratic sequence. So our square numbers are 1, 4, 9, 16 and 25. Remember when you, if you're asked how you know this is quadratic, you look at the first difference and you notice it's not the same. So then what you do is you look at the second difference and you notice that is the same. So the difference between your first differences, that's when it's quadratic. And then our triangular numbers, um, we should have got as 1, 3, 6, 10 and 5. So with that, it's particularly noticeable. You're adding 2. Okay. And then you're adding three and then you're adding four and then you're adding five and you can see a pattern here of adding consecutive numbers and then your prime numbers must be whatever's left but i'm hoping you know it's numbers that have uh, two factors one in itself and we should remember from last lesson two is the only even prime number brilliant right so today's success criteria bronze to be able to differentiate between different types of sequences well we've just done that so that's brilliant Silver is to be able to apply the nth term to solve practical problems. And then gold is to be able to successfully answer examination questions. So today, everything we've learned, we're just tying it all together and looking at real life problems. So where might you use sequences? Where might you use nth term rules in real life situations? Um, so it'll be very much, um, I'll show you how to do something and then you'll have a go at questions. And there's timings on, I'd like you to try and stick to those. So pause your video, give yourself as much time as it states and see if you can get the questions done. So we'll do this one together first. So why do we need to worry about sequences and finding nth terms? When we look at this blue box here, uh, many problem solving situations that you would like to meet involve number sequences. So you need to be able to formulate general rules from given number patterns. Let's look at this example here. So the diagram shows how a pattern of squares builds up. So we've got an A part here. How many squares will be in the nth pattern? So that means what's the nth term rule? And which pattern has 99 squares in it? So we should know, I've done this box, this table here to help you. So pattern number and then the number of squares that appear and we can see it matches up. So we've got one square there, we've got three and we've got five, just as it states in the table. And we should know by now that in order to find the nth term, so when you're asked how many squares will there be in the nth pattern, it just means in any, what's the rule? You're looking for that common difference. So we can see it's plus two, it's plus two, it's plus two. So we know that we're looking at two n, as the first part of our nth term. Now, if n is 1, because remember the pattern number is n, if n is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, but we don't want 2, we want 1, so I have to subtract 1, and that's our nth term rule. And we can see that if we apply that each time it works, here n is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, subtract 1 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, subtract 1 is 5. And then we've got which pattern has 99 squares in it? Well, we looked at this before. So we use our nth term, we write it as a linear equation with equals 99, because we're trying to find which pattern number, which term has exactly 99 squares. Okay, so we need to find out what n is. So we have to get rid of that subtract one. And this again, I keep going on about it, it goes back to chapter 15 by doing the inverse, but to both sides to keep our equation balanced. And then we have to get rid of that times by two by dividing by 2 and if we divide by 2 to both sides okay 2n divided by 2 gets us n and 100 divided by 2 gets us 50 so instead of having to write down keep going through the pattern till you get to the number 99 you can use the nth term rule and substitute in and we get 50 okay and we can check that because well if n is 50 we know that 2 times 50 which is this part here gets us 100 and 100 subtract 1 gets us 99. 
Okay, right, we'll have a look at another teach example. I'd like you maybe to copy this one down um, after it's done, and then you have a go at a do example. Okay, so here are our, here's our first question. Draw the next pattern in the sequence. So the first thing I would do is I'd say, right, well, we've got four matchsticks here. And then look, I'm adding three each time. So then I've got seven in total. And then I'm adding another three here, and I've got 10. And then I'm adding another three, and I've got 13. So the next pattern just me just must be the fourth pattern, the fourth term, add three more matchsticks. So it looks like this, and we have in total 16 matchsticks, okay? Then it says, how many matchsticks are there in the nth diagram? That just means in any diagram, how many matchsticks are there? So how would you work it out? It means what is the nth term rule? So again, remember, we're looking for this common difference. We've gone four, seven, 10, 13. So our constant is we're adding three each time. So we start with 3n, and then we know if n equals 1, 3 times 1 is 3, but we want 4, so we have to add 1, so we get 3n plus 1. That's a really helpful thing to do. If you have a problem solving questions to do with sequences and you're not given the nth term rule, even if you think I can't answer the whole question, find the nth term because it always is worth points, okay? So how many matchsticks will there be in the 25th term? So that just means, remember, n is 25 now, so we substitute 25 into here. So we're actually doing 3 times 25, which is 3 times the n, plus 1, gets us 76 matchsticks. And then it's for which term in the pattern could you use a maximum of 67 matchsticks? And it's the 22nd term. Well, how do you know this? Okay, so we can have a little look back. We'll do a little bit of working out up here. So what we're being asked to work out is if we've got 3n plus 1, equals 67, what's n? So we take away the one from both sides, which leaves three n equals 66, and then you divide by three, so you get n equals 22, so it's the 22nd term where you would use 67 matchsticks. You might wanna pause the video and copy this down and just refer back to, um, but can you please now have a go at this question? Um, do this first part, so just pause the video um, as you have a go at this first section good so you should have just noticed that each time you're adding another three matchsticks on so we've got five here then we've got eight then we've got 11 and then we've got 14 okay all right just pause the video as you have a go at finding the nth term because that's what this question always means Right, lovely. I'm hoping you got 3n plus 2 because you'll notice the common difference from 5 to 8, 8 to 11, and 11 to 14 is 3, which is where the 3n comes from. If n is 1, because this is term number 1, 3 times 1 is 3, but we want 5, so we add 2, and that works each time. And then how many matchsticks will there be in the 40th term? Well, that just means we're substituting 40 in for n. So we do 3 times 40, which is actually 120. Okay. And 120 plus 2 gets us 122 matchsticks. And then always the trickier, students find this is most tricky, but we'll do lots of practice of it. For which term in the pattern could you use a maximum of 74 matchsticks? So just remember, we're using this approach here. So you'll start with um, 3n plus 2 equals 74, and you want to work out what n is. So please pause the video and go from there. Right, good, so what you should have done is taken away 2 from both sides, so then you get 3n equals 72, and then you have to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of the times by 3, and you should end up with 24, so it's the 24th term. And you might want to pause the video again if you haven't quite managed it, copy it down, get all the right bits and pieces, um, otherwise we'll just move on. So here's your first challenge, and um, you might choose to pause the video for 4 minutes and see if you can work it all out. You might do it quicker, you might take it a little bit longer, it doesn't matter, but please work through this question, pause the video as you do it. Right, good, okay, so I'm hoping you all got A and you were able to add the additional two matchsticks on and you got a diagram that looked like this. Um, how many matchsticks would you need for the nth set of triangles? So what's the nth term rule? It's 2n plus 1. And again, just look for the constant. You're adding 2 each time and 2 times 1 here is 2 plus 1 gets you 3. How many matchsticks would you need, need to make the 60th set of triangles? Well, it's 121 because we just substitute 60 in here, 2 times 60 is 120, plus 1 is 121. And then if you have 100 matchsticks, what is the largest set of triangles you could make? Well, let's have a look. So we've got 2n plus 1 equals 100. 
Okay, so we take away one from both sides and you get 2n equals 99. And then we have to divide by 2. So we get n is 49.5. Now, normally with rounding with problems, you'd round up to 50. But it's the 49 and a half term. You don't have half terms. So is it the 49th term or the 50th term? If you only have 100 matchsticks, which one could you make? So you'd actually round down, okay? So it's the 49th term. And you can check that, 49 sets. If you have n as 49, so you do 2 times 49 plus 1. So 2 times 49 is 98, plus 1 equals 99. Well, that's brilliant. The 49th set only needs 99 matchsticks. I've got 100. Let's try the 50th if we were to round up. So 2 times 50 equals 100, plus 1 actually it was 101. I've not got enough matchsticks for that. And that's why with problems like this, we don't round up. You go to the one before. Okay, brilliant. Right, have a go at this next problem for me. Please pause the video, take as long as you need. Right, good. So how many people could be seated at four tables put together in this way? Well, the first thing you would do is you say, well, there's six there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14. Right, I can see here I'm adding 4 each time, so it must be 18. How many people could be seated at n tables put together in this way? So just looking for the term rule, so you're adding 4 each time, so we know it's 4n to start with. If n is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 gets you 6. Lovely. And then when 50 people attend a conference, they decide to use the tables in this way. How many tables do they need? So you could just actually carry your sequence on, keep adding 4 and add how many terms you've got. Or you could use a system we've used before, um, which is where we write it in as a linear equation. And then we take away 2 from both sides. It's 48. And then we divide by 4. And we actually get 12. Okay, so that's one way you could actually just carry the sequence on until you hit 50, because you're not going that far into the sequence. Um, but obviously, if you're asked 300 people to attend the conference, you need to have some sort of system to use. And this is why we keep going back to this process here. Lovely. Right, again, four minutes. Have a go at this question for me. Read it really, really carefully. Right, good. Okay, so the perimeter of the shape, so let's read it. It says the pattern is made from regular pentagons of silent one centimetre, which means that all of these are worth one. Okay, so the first perimeter number, or the first number in our sequence is five. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not part of the perimeter, it's inside the shape, so our next number in our sequence is eight. And then we'll notice, right, we're adding three each time. So then we've got 11, and then we've got 14. So if we write down the perimeter of each shape, we get our sequence. Brilliant, that's really helpful. Right, what is the perimeter of patterns like this made from six pentagons? So you just need to add three again, and you get 17, and add three again, and you get 20. And then it says n pentagons. That just means what is the perimeter of patterns like this made from any amount of pentagons? It wants the nth term rule. So again, let's refer back. So we already worked out, right, miss said, we're adding three each time. So we're starting off with three n. If n is one, three times one is three, add two, gets us five. So it works. And then 50 pentagons. This is what I mean. You don't want to keep adding three on 50 times to get to the right answer. You might make a mistake. So we can just go, well, we've got three n plus two. Let's put 50 in for the n. Three times 50 is 150 plus two is 152. And then what's the largest number of pentagons that can be put together at like this type of perimeter of less than a thousand centimeters? And you should get 332. And sorry to bore you. I hope I'm not, but I will fly through it just to show why. So three n plus two less than thousand centimeters don't worry about that. that's an inequality we've looked at these before just treat it like an equation so I have to get rid of the plus two by taking away two from both sides so we get that and then I have to divide oh apologies remember I have to divide by three to both sides so you get n and you actually get 332.6 recurring so we don't round up to 333 remember we keep it at 332. Tremendous. Right, okay, next one. Have a go at this. Look at this really, really carefully. A should be okay. Um, just read B carefully. I actually, when I first went through this PowerPoint, um, I did what I always tell you not to do. I didn't read the question properly and I made a mistake. So just keep an eye on it and pause the video as you have a go at this question. 
Right, good, okay. So the first thing to look out for is actually every um, term in the pattern is worth 100 metres. So just that's worth 100 metres, that's worth 200 metres, and that's worth 300 metres. That's really important for this question and for later on. So that's the first thing. You won't get any points for it necessarily, but it's helpful to write that down. So how many lamps are needed for 900 metres of this motorway? So we work out the nth term first, and what we're doing is we're going four, six, eight. So we're adding two each time, which gets us two n. Well, two times one is two. You have to add two to get four. So there it is. Now, 900 metres of this motorway, you don't just substitute 900 metres in for n. We substitute nine in. So 900 metres just means the ninth term, okay? So we can do two times nine plus two is 20 lamp posts, okay? Then what about here? Eight kilometres of this motorway. Think carefully. You get 162 lamp posts, okay? Because it's actually eight, um, eight, remember, if I have a look, 1,000 metres equals one kilometre, okay? So one kilometre means 10 terms because 100 metres is one term in the sequence. So we're actually looking at 80 terms here. Okay, so we substitute 80 in. So 2 times 80 is 160, plus 2 is 162. And then for this one here, um, the most often seen incorrect answer is that. And that's what I did first, um, because what you would have done is, you would have done, well, Miss said you do 2n plus 2 equals 1598. Okay, you probably use your calculator, which is fine. You would have taken away 2. You would divide it by two, and then you would have got this. Now, that's the correct term. You'd probably get marked this. It's the 798th term, but it wants to know how long is the motorway. Now, one term is 100 metres. So how do we turn 798 into metres? Well, we times by 100. So you might have 79,800 metres, which is fine. Or you might have written it as 79.8 kilometres. Either of those is fine. Okay, lovely. Right, again, um, have a look at this question for me. Pause the video as you do it. A little bit of extra time here because there's a little bit more to it. Um, just read it really, really carefully. Have someone read it out to you if you need to. Um, but in a moment, I'll go through it and read it. We'll read it all together. But just pause the video and have a quick go at it first, please. Right, good. So a school dining hall had trapezium-shaped tables. Each table could seat five people as shown, but when the tables are joined together as shown below, fewer people can sit at each table. So the first mistake students make is they go, I won't count them, I'll go to you know, 5, 10, 15, because it says five at each table. But when they're joined together, it's fewer, okay? So what I might do first is I might just see how many people can sit at one table, and it's five, because I'm gonna make my sequence here. Then we've got eight people can sit at two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and 11 people can sit at three, okay? Now we can see here, what we're doing each time is we're just adding three, okay? Every time we add a new table, three more people can sit at it. So four tables is nice and easy, it's just the next diagram, and 11 add three is 14. Then it says n tables, so we now know that means what's the nth term rule? Well, if we're adding three, we know we're starting with three n. If n is one, okay, and I always go back to this, What's three times one? Well, it's three, but we want five, so you have to add two. And it always works. Three times two is six, add two is eight. So that's n tables. And then it's 13 tables. Well, we can just substitute the 13 in here. And we can do three times 13, sorry, plus two, and we get 41. Brilliant. Right, for an outside charity event, up to 200 people had to be seated. How many tables arranged like this did they need? So this is one of those questions where we probably would write it um, as an equation, sort the pen out, um, where you'd go 3n plus 2 um, equals 200. It doesn't say less than or greater than, it says up to 200, so we split the equal sign. So we take away 2 from each side, and then you divide both sides by 3, 
So you, oh dear, silly mess. And you get n equals 66. Exactly. Okay, lovely. Right, have a look at this one. I want you to take your time over it. Um, it's a problem, real problem solving question, real higher level thinking, higher tier question. Um, there might be more than one way to solve it. I'll go through a particular way. But Tom is using matchsticks to build three different patterns. He builds the patterns in steps. Um, he has five boxes of matches, each labelled average contents for to do matches. Can he build a pattern for the 20th step? Right, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do first, and that will help you work out the rest uh, before you pause the video. You'd need to work out the nth term rule first. So do that, pause the video, see if you can solve the whole problem. Right, good. Now, what some of you will have done is you might have worked out the nth term rule for each separate pattern. Um, it can get you to the same answer in the end, it's a lot more work, so I'm going to show you a quick way of doing it. We're going to look at this as a term, all of this is a term, and all of this is a term, and look at the matchsticks. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So in this whole pattern here, we've got 12 matchsticks. Then we've got 12 here, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So from that we can work out our nth term rule because we'll notice that what we're doing each time, okay, is we're adding nine. And we know that we've got an arithmetic sequence there, so we've got nine n. Okay, now in this case n is one, the first term in our sequence. Nine times one is nine, but we want 12, we don't want nine, so we have to add three. And now we've got our nth term rule. Lovely. Now, the question says, can Tom build the pattern for the 20th step? So step one, two, three, maybe you don't want to keep writing out, adding nine each time, potentially make a mistake. You could do that. You could add nine 17 more times and get to, um, to the 20th step. Or we can just do um, substitute in. So we can do nine times 20, because n will be 20. And then plus three, nine times 20 is 180 plus three is 183. Well, what that tells me is I need 183 matchsticks for the 20th step. Have I got enough? Well, he's got five boxes. Each box has 42 matches. So let's work out if he's got enough. Let's do um, 42 times five. So we know two times five is 10. Four times five is 20, one is 210. So yes, He's got enough matches because he has 210 and he needs 183. Okay, don't panic if you find this, uh, find this challenging. It should be. Okay, it is a challenging question. There's a lot of thought that has to go into it. But what you all should have been able to do is find an nth term rule. And if you can't, um, next week is your knowledge recall for, for sequences. You need to go back and look at how to write the nth term rule. It's incredibly important. Um, OK, right, we'll go through this one together. So some real life context again. A supermarket manager wants to display grapefruit stacked in layers, each of which is a triangle. Think about that. OK, these are the first four layers. If the display is four layers deep, how many grapefruit will there be in the display? Pause the video. Answer question A. Right, good. We're well, told these are the first four layers. How many grapefruits are there? Well, there's one. There's three in the second layer, there's six in the third, and there's 10 in the fourth. Just add those numbers together and you get 20. And you notice here we're looking at triangular numbers. Really simple, okay? Um, please have a look at B. So the manager tells her staff that there should not be any more than eight layers, as otherwise the fruit will be squashed, which is sad. Um, what is the most great fruit that could be stacked? So this time we've got eight layers. Please pause the video and have a go at this question. Right, let's have a look together. So again, look, we know first layer is one, then it's three, then it's six, then it's 10. There's our first four layers. We should now recognize that this is our triangular numbers, okay, because this is happening. So the next value would be 15, because we had five, then 21, because we had six, then 28, because we had seven, and then 36, because we had eight. And if we add all of those numbers together, we get 120. So this is one of those questions that might come later on because um, it's complicated. It's not. It's just relying on you knowing triangular numbers and knowing what the first eight are and adding them together. It's as simple as that. Right, next one. We're going to read this together and we're going to go through it a bit at a time. So some students are making hollow patterns from small squares. 
four students write down their methods for finding the number of squares in the nth pattern. So we need to know what the nth pattern is. What's the nth term rule? So find the nth term rule here of the blue squares. Please pause the video as you do this. Right, good. So we'll go through it. We should count them. So we've got three, six, eight blue squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. Three, six, nine, twelve. 16 and then 20. Brilliant. So we can now work out our nth term rule because what's happening each time, sorry, not timesing by four. Um, silly miss, let's get the eraser up. Uh, we're not timesing by four at all. We are adding four each time because it's an arithmetic sequence. Let's get it up. So we're adding four. So that tells us the first part of our nth term rule is 4n. Okay. So if n is 1, what's 4 times 1? Well, it's 4. We want 8, though. So to get from 4 to 8, you have to add 4. So that's our nth term rule. OK, brilliant. Right, we're going to look at four different students and their methods for finding the nth term rule. We need to work out if they get to the correct answer. If they made a mistake, what is it? So here's Alex. We've also got Colin. We've got Ed. And we've got Gail. So I'd like to have a look at their four methods, um, work out if they would get to the right nth pattern, nth term rule. And if they haven't, what mistake have they made? Please pause the video as you do this. Right, good. So let's look at Alex first. So he's saying each side is n plus 2, okay, because you've got one side here, you've got one square, adds two more. And he's saying every side is n plus 2. And you've got four sides, so let's just do that times by four. So what he's saying you do is this. So actually, he would end up with 4n plus 8, which is wrong. And the mistake he's made is he's counted each corner square twice. You should only count each corner square once. OK, right, let's look at Colin. The bits between the corners are n length. So he's saying b between the corners. So we've got n, 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 and n. And there are four of these. Then just add the four corners. OK, so how many ends have we got there? We've got four lots of n. How many corners to add? Four. Brilliant. Colin's right. Now, if going through the first two, if you really struggled and now that you've gone through the first two, you're thinking, hang on a minute, I've got a good idea of what we're being asked to do. You might want to pause the video again at this point and have a go at the next two. Have a go at working out Gail and Ed's method. See if you get to the right answer. Pause the video now to do that. Or we'll go through together. So again, it's square or rectangle, so opposite sides are the same. So Gail's saying if that's n plus 2, that's n plus 2. And if that's n, that's n. So how many ends have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4 ends. And then we've got plus 2 and a plus 2, which gets us plus 4. So Gail's right. Well done, Gail. Um, and then Ed's saying a side without a corner is n plus 1. So it's similar to Alex, except he's not counted each corner twice. He's counted it once. So he's saying if that's n plus 1, that's n plus 1. That's n plus 1. How many ends have we got? Well, we've got 4 ends, and then we've got 4 lots of 1, which is plus 4. So the only one that's wrong is Alex, and it's because he counted the corners twice. Um, and that's the end of today's lesson. I know you saw this lovely GIF last lesson. Just a reminder, if you've not done the Hegarty tasks, they are the three to do. Um, it's really helpful that you go through and have a look. Um, and then next week, you're... At some point, you will do the knowledge recall for sequences. We'll do um, some revision tasks next week. Um, really well done. If you have any issues or concerns, um, just get in touch with your teacher, with myself, Mr. Haste or Mr. Sleeth, um, and we'll help you. Very well done. Um, see you.